Fredo popped out the cut and got into the streets at an early age. From beating up a teacher to shootouts and robberies, he grew up with the risk of jail time or even death. But Fredo beat the odds and made it out the hood to make a name for himself that will last forever. This is Top Trend TV, and this is the criminal history and biography of Fredo Santana. was born on July 4th, 1990, in the Parkway Garden area of Chicago, better known as O-Block, the most dangerous block in Chicago. Fredo was raised by his mother and his grandmother. His father's role in his life is unknown. But Fredo hopped in the streets at an early age and joined a gang called the BDs, a well-known gang in Chicago known for their murders against rival gang members, the GDs. He made his way selling drugs and hitting licks on the streets of Chicago. Only at the age of 12, which was the first time he got locked up for selling drugs. And Fredo's parents didn't really keep tabs on him. So Fredo continued to do what he wants and live a street life. And being from a city where gun violence is so common and the leading city of murders every year made it hard for Fredo to make it out. But he says he always knew that he would make it out and be something bigger than what he was. With seeing all the violence around him was the cause of a lot of built up anger in Fredo and ended up getting arrested at the age of 14 for beating up his teacher unsure of the details of this situation because unfortunately Fredo doesn't have a lot of interviews but he did spend some time in juvenile hall and later getting out on probation he says he started to play around with rapping at this time but didn't really take it serious he says he was managing Chief Keith and helping him with his career but Fredo ended up going back to jail around 2010 right when his cousin Chief Keith started to get hot in the Chicago drill scene and their group GBE was getting pretty hot. So when Fredo got out, he decided to take music more serious, seeing Chief Keith and Lil Reese's success. After serving about two years in jail, Fredo Santana dropped his first song named Hitta. And the song did pretty good due to the Glory Boys rise of clout. And around this time, the Glory Boys clout was mostly only in their hometown of Chicago. Soon Fredo dropping on that, featuring his cousin Chief Keith. And this song went crazy in that city, with the lyrics mostly talking about robbing, killing, and street life. Really showed the struggle in Chicago. But in 2012, Chief Keith dropped his first big song, featuring Lil Reese named I Don't Like, and this song went crazy, putting the whole squad on the map, plus one of Lil Reese's lyrics shouted out Fredo Santana saying, Fredo in the cut, that's a scary sight, and with his hard up look and the cross between his eyes, really made Fredo stand out in the group, and made fans go crazy everywhere. Bringing the Chicago drill music to life, Fredo and his cousin Chief Keith continued to drop music, dropping his first mixtape in 2012 named It's a Scary Sight, then dropping Fredo Krueger and, and then Street Ish. And seeing the fans that Glory Boys was gaining, Fredo continued to drop mixtapes, including It's a Scary Sight 2, Walking Legend which has his father holding him as a child in 2014. Then he dropped Ain't No Money Like Trap Money in 2015. And this mixtape nearly has 4 million hits on my mixtapes. Then after that, he dropped Fredo Mafia, Plugged In, and 
Freddo Krueger 2 in 2017. Then of this year, they dropped The Legend. But growing up around a lot of violence and a lot of his close homeboys dying at early ages, like his cousin Blood Money and his close friend Capo, and losing many more people, Fredo says he suffered with PTSD, which is post-traumatic stress disorder, and it's a disorder which most army vets suffer from, from being in war and seeing a lot of violence, and was the cause of Fredo's heavy drug use. At one point being addicted to Xanax and lean, Fredo attributed heavy drug use to trauma experience during his childhood and turning to drugs as a coping mechanism. Fredo was hospitalized in March of 2017 after suffering a seizure, which he blamed on heavy workload and a poor sleep schedule. As Fredo continued to have seizures, he was diagnosed with idiopathic epilepsy in March of 2017 and was subscribed Keppra to treat it. Despite the medicine, Fredo continued to suffer from seizures, usually multiple in a row. Fredo was hospitalized again in October 2017 after a friend and fellow rapper Gino Marley found Fredo mid-seizure on the floor in his house with blood coming out his mouth. Fredo was rushed to the hospital and diagnosed with liver and kidney failure, with the main factor being his addiction to Xanax and lean. Fredo also expressed interest in going to rehab while in the hospital. But on the evening of January 19, 2018, at around 11.30 p.m. local time, Fredo's girlfriend, Audrey, discovered him unresponsive in their LA home. Unfortunately though, shortly after Fredo was pronounced dead, he had suffered from a fatal seizure and the autopsy revealed that he had developed a cardiovascular disease in addition to the previous condition he suffered from. Fredo had one child months before he died and a lot of rappers and even a lot of his ops shouted him out when he died, like FBG Duck, which really shows you what kind of guy he really was. But Fredo didn't do too many interviews either, so the information that I did get was pretty hard to find. But in no way was I here to disrespect Fredo, just here to give a bio of his life and his criminal history, and to keep his name alive. But that'd be about it for Fredo Santana. Make sure you like or dislike, comment, and subscribe, and hit that bell notification so you know when I post. And as always, stay blessed and stay well. Yeah, yeah, I'm out.